What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Amory Lawrence. If you're new here, I'm an IFBB bikini pro. And I'm excited to have you guys here today on my Road to Olympia series. We're gonna talk all about alcohol and how I went from being pretty much a borderline alcoholic to now an IFBB bikini pro. Now, I've been posting a lot on my uh, Instagram and asking you guys to ask me questions so that I can come up with different ideas, different topics, and go through different things that you guys may be struggling with that I can help you with. And somebody asked me on my Instagram, by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, go give me a follow. They asked me if I was sober. And so let's dive into that first. No, I am not sober, but I have taken long spurts of time where I consume absolutely zero alcohol. And now in my current life I'm currently in prep I'm 10 weeks out from a show so I'm not drinking right now but like in my current everyday life when I'm not on prep I am able to have a glass of wine every now and then or a drink now and then without feeling like I have to a binge and overdo alcohol because what used to happen and we'll deep dive into the story it'll go all the way back to when I started first drinking when I was introduced to it why I think I got sucked into it um, but I used to be the person who, when I had one, my mindset was, what would the point in having one be if I wasn't getting hammered? And so that was my mentality around alcohol. Now, let's rewind back to the good old days where it all started. So I grew up around my parents drinking just about every single night. My mom drank almost every night. My dad drank beer every single day. Like. When I say drank, he drank like a 12 pack every single day and still does to this day. And it is what it is. You know, everyone chooses their own path in life. And they were functional though. And they provided me an incredible life. And I'm super grateful for my parents. But I grew up with the understanding that drinking every single day, drinking every single night was normal. Like that was normal. Everybody did that. You have wine with dinner and you have beer when you get off work. And on the weekends you get trashed with your friends and family that was just normal and so as I got older and I started to go to high school parties and I started to be more exposed to it I didn't even think twice to start drinking so I started very young I think I was in I want to say eighth grade when I had my first sip of alcohol and it was so stupid it was like I had some wine from my mom's cabinet and then I went to a party and there was alcohol and I drank there and then it just kind of spiraled from there and so every chance that I got I drank I went to high school parties in high school I was voted um, what was I voted what was it life of the party and school flirt and something else I don't even know um, but I was notorious for being at every single party pretty much getting blackout drunk me and my friend Rachel used to say blackout or back out and we would drink a fifth of absolute vodka together as high schoolers like every single weekend back to back to back weekends we would get absolutely plastered and everyone would always joke and say like you'll be the girl that after high school you'll um be at all the high school parties again and i'm gonna put some pictures of when i was younger on here for you guys uh you'll be at high school parties da da da, da. and i was so offended by that comment I don't know why that bothered me so much but I was so determined to like get away and I was fairly like I wasn't like I guess I was popular in high school I don't know I was I was a varsity cheerleader a lot of people knew me I went to all the parties all that good stuff but I was so after that comment and after people like made that assumption about me that I'll never go anywhere in life, I'll never be successful, that um, I'm always going to be the girl who is at parties getting drunk with everybody and doing weird dumb shit and being reckless, I kind of got offended by that or like insulted or insecure maybe being a better word and I literally did everything in my power to not be that person and so when high school was over I went to a community college and there's a reason I'm telling the story by the way because it kind of segues to where I am now which is a multi 
six figure, almost million dollar business owner. Um, my husband owns a multi million dollar business. We live in a gorgeous house. We have an amazing life. I'm a professional bodybuilder. Like, my life is, I'm so fucking grateful every single day of the life that I've created. But anyway, so going back to my story after high school I went to community college and in that community college I decided I don't want to physically go to class I want to take online classes I was a major in kinesiology minor in nutrition science and um, so I would do online classes and in the meantime of while I was doing these online classes full-time I was also bartending full-time and I was an in-person personal trainer and so I would wake up and go to the gym to personal train from 5 a.m. until 4 p.m. And then I would go to, I don't know if you guys are from the, anyone from the DMV area, I would go to the National Harbor. I was 18 at the time. You can bartend in PG County at the age of 18. I was 18 at the time. I started bartending um, from 4 p.m. until 9 p.m. And then I would go to my second bartending job from 9 p.m. until 3 a.m. I would sleep in my car and then go back to in-person personal training and train my clients. Half of the time I was half drunk training my clients. I would drink all night with uh, my bar guests, my regulars, and uh, I would shower at the gym. I would try to do a ton, a ton of cardio so that I could kind of like sweat the alcohol out. I would eat trash food. I wasn't taking care of my body. And I felt like I was living such a hypocritical life at that time because I was promoting health and fitness, but really on the inside, I was binging and purging I was binge drinking like a motherfucker literally any chance I got to drink I would drink and I was pretty much using it which I see now like when I had like my awakening I don't even want to call it that my wake-up call uh, back in 2015 I see now that I was using it to ignore my feelings of unfulfillment and my emotions because, and I'll do a whole story time on this for you guys. I actually did a Facebook, I, let me, I'm gonna see if I can link my Facebook Live that I did on like my story uh, about my past trauma and all that good stuff. But I was dealing with a lot of unfelt emotions that I was just kind of shoving down and the feelings of being unfulfilled and feeling like an imposter. I had like crazy imposter syndrome and I felt like such a hypocrite because I was preaching health and fitness but drinking myself into a hole, not taking care of myself. But I was thin so no one ever questioned it, right? No one ever said anything. And um, I was using it as a coping mechanism to cope with stress, to cope with feelings, to cope with my feelings of unfulfillment. And uh, back in 2015, I did my first bodybuilding competition. I was like, I'm going to prep for this show, not for any other reason other than my husband's brother said, you would be good at this, you should try it. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. And I don't half-ass anything. I full-ass everything. I am addicted to whatever I am doing at the time, and it gets full-assed, okay? It gets 100% fully engulfed. That's my new obsession, and I won't stop until I conquer that obstacle or that challenge or whatever I'm doing. I am obsessed. I am so freaking competitive. I was like, hell yes. I was an all-star cheerleader for so long when I was a kid. Co competition is just in my fucking nature. Like I, I literally live to compete. And so I was like, yes, I'll do it. Let's go. I didn't have a coach. I coached myself. I had a little bit of a background, but not in bodybuilding. I just had a background in like general nutrition. So I kind of fucking winged it. Well, long story short, I won the entire show. It was like, I was, and there's like fucking bugs and shit all around me, so just bear with me. I won the entire show, I was on cloud nine, I, on the outside, looked the best that I ever did. Uh, I was so excited, and then it was my 21st birthday that following week. So my birthday is August 16th. I think that the show was like August 8th or 9th or something like that. And then I went to flew to Vegas that next week for my 21st birthday. Or no, 
because I remember it was my the no this is what happened my show was at the end of August like August 20th and I didn't get to celebrate that's what happened I did not get to celebrate my 21st birthday because I was in competition mode and I was on prep and I didn't get to celebrate my 21st birthday. So after the show, then we went to Vegas. First time I've been to Vegas ever in my entire life. I haven't been drinking for the past, I don't know, I think I did like a two month prep. I crash dieted, I was doing hours and hours of cardio. That's a whole nother fucking vlog. If you guys want me to talk about that, drop below. I'll tell you about my first prep experience. I was fucking damaging. Um, but I crash dieted, it was like two month prep. I didn't drink for two months. Uh, then I went to Vegas. And I fucked up. I binged. I binged. I binged. I binged. I binged. Anything I could eat, anything I could drink, I consumed it. Literally. Every single possible thing I could put in my mouth hole, I did. Because I was depriving myself for so long. And this is like, and I'll do a whole YouTube video on this. This is like a big defining moment for me in my like wake up call and in my bodybuilding career and honestly in my life, in my business, literally this was probably like the best thing that ever happened to me but in the moment like the worst thing that like I could have possibly gone through in that exact moment of my life. Um, I've had worse things happen to me but it was just really fucking miserable. And so we went to Vegas, I ate, I drank, I did the thing, and I gained 20 pounds in a week. 20 pounds in a week from eating and drinking and being gluttonous and binging. I remember there was a night everyone wanted to go out and I physically could not go out because my ankles were so big. I had the worst edema I have ever seen in my entire life. I thought my ankles were going to physically pop. It was insane. It was fucking nuts. Um, so that was not a super fun experience. And so when I got back, of course, duh, my mindset was, well, I fucked up, so now I need to get back on the prep diet. Right? And so I throw myself back on this prep diet and I'm like, oh, I could do this. Yeah, that lasted like three days. It lasted like two or three days where I was consistent and then I was like, fuck this and I'd go into a binge. And then of course, after I binge, I try to counteract it with excess cardio and purging and not eating and going on the prep diet. And then I would binge and then I would purge and then I would binge and then I would purge. And it was just that vicious cycle of binge and purge, drink and not drink. And then I got to the point where I remember one night I was laying on the couch, literally, I had probably eaten so much that my stomach was so distended, I thought I was gonna throw up. And honestly, I got to the point where I was like, if I just stick my fingers down my throat, then the food that I ate doesn't count. That's when I knew I had a fucking problem. That's when I knew that the over drinking, the overeating had to fucking stop. And I had to figure out what I was about to do and I know this is about drinking but it also you know goes hand in hand binge drinking binge eating it's all the fucking same we're trying to find comfort we're trying to find like some fulfillment in something that food can never give you and we have to remember also and I'll wrap up this story too but we have to remember also that the food is not the problem your binging is not the problem your perspective on whatever you're going through is the actual problem it's not the food the food's not the problem it's your perspective on the food that is the actual problem. And so I got to that point where I was like about to make myself puke. I was drunk. My stomach was so distended. I ate like fucking a whole pack of Oreos, a tub of ice cream. It was, it was nuts. I felt disgusting. And the next day, my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, he looked at me and he was like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And I was like, I honestly don't even know and so I had to take some time to really self-reflect and that was my biggest wake-up call I had to take some time to really self-reflect because I was bawling my eyes out the next day about how depressed I was about how I felt like shit about how I felt like a hypocrite I gained all this weight um, I had this issue with food I had this horrible relationship with alcohol and uh, that's when I chose to make a change and that's when I realized as a fitness professional that I also needed help. And so in all of our lives, we think that we need to do things on our own, right? I wanted to be this like egotistical, self-made strong woman. 
but that's what other people on this earth are literally for is to help us so that's when i decided i have to hire help i need to hire a coach to help me fucking figure out what the fuck is even going on in my head so i hired a coach they helped me with my business they helped me with my mindset they completely changed my perspective on like the majority of my life literally was game changing for me. That was the thing that really adjusted my perspective and got me out of my own head, got me out of my own bubble because we get so caught up in our everyday lives, we forget we're not fucking special. Like we are not the only people going through shit, but we get so caught up in our own heads that we think that we're like the special case, that no one understands, that no one knows how to help me. And it's just, it's really selfish. Like it's honestly really selfish for us to do that and to not reach out for help because you guys need to remember when you're not showing up for yourself, you're definitely not showing up powerfully for your family and you're definitely not showing powerfully in your relationships or for the other people in your life. You were just being selfish. You're throwing this pity party and I realized that and I got the help. Um, and then as time went on, I decided, okay, I need to do research. I need to figure out, you know, what do I need to do to fix my fucking issues with food? And what do I need to do to fix my, what I like to call metabolic dysfunction, right? Where I literally couldn't catch up. I was eating 900 calories a day, doing hours of cardio, and I was still gaining weight because I fucked my metabolism up so bad with that prep. And then, of course, way over ate right after that and binge and gained all this weight and then way over drank on top of it. And it was just a absolute fucking mess and so I did the work I took the time I built a better relationship with food um, I did the fucking research I took the classes I hired the mentors the best mentors in the industry and th now that's what I literally do like metabolic repair is my specialty I absolutely love I absolutely love reverse dieting clients it's my absolute favorite thing to do um, but I also specialize in weight loss and not just weight loss but sustainable weight loss and teaching women how to lose weight long term and sustainably that they can actually stick to something and eat the foods they love without sacrificing their social life and seeing the results that they want without feeling like they have to binge and purge every single time they do a fucking diet or tell people I can't eat that because I'm on a diet. So when I did the work, the first step was coming to terms with my reality because I was in denial for a long time that I didn't have a drinking problem and that I was fine and that it wasn't a big deal and that it was normal. But then when I realized that it was affecting my relationship and I can do a whole YouTube on that, um, I was a pretty violent drunk and it was really affecting my relationship and it was really um, causing issues to where I would get fucked up, hammered, start these big arguments, throw shit, cause issues, make these big elaborate scenes, scream at my husband and it was embarrassing and I would wake up and pretend like it never happened and I realized that I can't do that anymore. I can't do that anymore and my husband sat me down and he said you've got to stop doing this I can't be with somebody who acts like this and reacts like this and I'm super grateful every single day that he called me out on my bullshit but also that I was open to receiving that feedback and actually making a change and I didn't get defensive and I genuinely apologized and said I will never do that again and literally it was one choice I made one choice in that moment. What's more important, your relationship or the alcohol? What's more important, your mental health or the alcohol? What's more important, your kids or the alcohol? And so I made that choice in that exact moment. I am not gonna drink like this anymore. I'm not gonna act like this anymore. I'm not going to react like this anymore. And I chose. And so any time that I felt, because we all have those dark moments, any time that I felt like and again, guys, by the way, comment below because I kind of merged my binge eating a little bit and my binge drinking a little bit, but I'm gonna deep dive into this drinking and then I can do a whole nother story time on my binge eating. So comment below if you guys want that and I can take some time to do that for you guys. But 
I got really honest with myself and I made the choice I'm not going to do it anymore and I started changing small habits and patterns and so instead of having two bottles of wine every single night I instead of cutting cold turkey and never drinking again I decided okay I'm gonna have one I'm gonna have one bottle every single night instead of two or I would cut it down to where it was like okay now I'm gonna have three glasses now I'm gonna have two glasses now I'm gonna have one glass every single night and then I cut it to where I was swapping out my alcohol for other drinks guys this is a whole journey and maybe you're somebody who can't do that and that's not the route that you want to take maybe you do want to cut cold turkey but I'm promising you if you cut cold turkey it is going to feel a lot fucking harder and hit you a lot harder um, but you have to make that choice if you do want to cut cold turkey then you do have to make that choice that that's the route that you want to take and so I got to the point where I I would say it took me about a month to completely like wean off but guys I wasn't just drinking like a glass of wine a night I was drinking like two bottles of wine a night it was not fucking good things were not good I was taking shots every night when I was working it was just not it was not a good look um and so I slowly, it took me about a month to kind of taper down to where I was then substituting all my alcohol for different drinks, things like tea, things like kombucha, which I love. And I can show you guys, I'll put them on the screen, a couple brands of kombucha that I absolutely love. I'm going to drink some tonight too. I always fit that shit in my macros because I love it. It's so good. Um, or like a diet soda or like a soda water with lemon and lime or a soda water with Mio. I swapped it out with other drinks. And so as time went on, I slowly started reintroducing myself into social events where there was drinking happening and made the choice, and we'll talk about this too and why the power of choice is so freaking powerful, um, but I made the choice not to drink at an event where everyone was drinking. That is the big test. That is really tough, is the social influence. That is where things get tough, but you have to make the choice. You have to make the conscious decision before you even enter the event that this is what you're gonna do. Bring your own drinks. Make sure that you have everything that you need in order to be successful. And if you start to feel like, ugh, I hate it here, I don't feel comfortable, uh, I don't like this setting, then leave. So. You're either choosing to or not to do something. And remember, it's not the alcohol that's the problem, it's your perspective on the alcohol that's the actual problem. And if you're using it to numb out and to avoid feeling certain feelings, recognize that and ask yourself, what feelings am I trying to avoid? And try to take some time to actually spend sober time with yourself, feeling those feelings. It's not going to feel good. It doesn't feel great. And then take that time to dump on a piece of paper of exactly what you're feeling and the stress that you have. And then ask yourself, can I control this? Yes or no? Can I control these stressors? And if the answer is yes, which 99% of the time it is, write out an action plan of exactly what you can do to control these stressors and what actions you can actually physically take and then put them in your calendar to actually take action on these things. And if you can't control it, you have to sit with yourself and understand that you can physically do nothing about it. You have to accept and release the fact that there's nothing you can do and you need to move forward. And so when it comes to your perception on alcohol, a lot of people have the perception that they don't have a choice, but you do. You have a choice. You 100% have a choice and you're either convincing yourself to or not to consume it. And it's the similar to same thing that I go over with my clients who struggle with binge eating. And so when you are given that mental note, that mental thought of, I want to have a drink, I'm fiending for a drink, I would really like to have a drink. Again, you're either convincing yourself to or not to drink. Uh, take some time to convince yourself not to. And you have to literally write yourself a convincing statement. How are you gonna feel tomorrow when you drink? You're gonna feel like shit. You're gonna feel guilt. You're gonna feel regret. You're gonna wake up with a headache. You're not gonna have an efficient day. You're not gonna have a ton of energy the next day. You're probably gonna hit snooze. And you're gonna be mad at yourself for the entire day that you fucking did that to yourself, that you ruined your entire day over what? Over a couple glasses of wine? Was that really worth it? You don't even actually like alcohol that much. It doesn't benefit you, it doesn't serve you, it doesn't help you get closer to your goals. So the answer is no. Sign that contract with yourself, no. 
I am making the choice. I am choosing not to consume alcohol right now because it doesn't serve me. And that is the conversation that you need to have with yourself. And I talk about like the hard conversations and relationships are what make a relationship stronger. The hard conversations that you have with yourself makes the relationship with yourself stronger. And so when you're put in those situations where you feel like, oh my gosh, I want to drink, I want to drink, you have to have that conversation with yourself to convince yourself, no, you actually don't. You're just trying to numb out from something. You're trying to avoid a feeling of something, whether it's stress, whether it's sadness, whether it's anger, whatever it is. Maybe you're avoiding conflict. Try to figure out what you're avoiding and come up with a action item and a solution. Had to go in my yard and get this little dog squirrel. Uh, try to come up with a solution, an action plan for that and then the stressor fucking goes away because you actually took action on it and you actually handled what the situation was and you handled the problem. And it's not gonna cause you issues anymore because you handled it, you took fucking action on it. So adjust your perspective around alcohol. So the first step is to wean yourself off and sub alcohol for other drinks that you like. The second step is to make a strong, convincing conversation with yourself, convincing yourself that you don't even like alcohol, that alcohol doesn't serve you. So when you have those moments, you can talk yourself off the ledge pretty much. And then third and finally, the biggest thing that helped me was taking some time every single morning to choose one thing that wasn't serving me that I was gonna give up. And I swear to God, and I probably have it in my notes and I'll go look for it. Um, for two years straight, every single day, I wrote down, today I'm giving up alcohol. And I wrote it like it was a contract that I was signing to myself. Today I'll be giving up and I wrote alcohol every single day and I signed my name under that and made that promise and that non-negotiable contract with myself that that's what I was giving up and that was non-negotiable and so I took I would say I took a solid eight to ten months when I first weaned myself off of not drinking at all I didn't drink one sip of alcohol and then once I started feeling confident and intentionally going to events where there was alcohol and choosing not to drink and reminding myself why I'm doing this why is it so important and just enjoying myself without alcohol and I started conditioning and practicing and taking the time to do that then I was able to reintroduce it and tell myself I can have one glass of wine because I know tomorrow I can have another one. Instead of the mindset, I have to drink this entire bottle of wine right now because tomorrow I'm getting back on track, right? Or I'm going to take another two months off from drinking. But I took the time to do the work and to be honest, it's all in your mindset. It's all in your mindset. It's all in your perspective around the alcohol. So if you take the time, start small, wean yourself off, sub out the drinks, take the time to really make a convincing argument with yourself that you aren't served by alcohol. It doesn't serve you in any way, really. It's pretty fucking useless. It's pretty much liquid fucking poison for you. It ruins your life. And then also take that time to have that conversation with yourself every single day that you are giving it up every single day. It's a choice. You're choosing to give it up. You control the alcohol. The alcohol doesn't control you. Take some time off from it. Take a little hiatus and then slowly ease it back in. I mean, the other day we went to a country concert, which holy shit, I used to get plastered on those. I used to beer bong fucking tequila at country concerts. Um, but we went to a country concert and we went out for our anniversary and I even planned to have two glasses of wine and a Jack and Diet Coke. And we went to dinner. I had one glass of wine and I was like, yeah, that's enough. I got my fix. That's all I really want. That's all I really need. I don't really need more than this. And I went to the concert. I drank water and Diet Coke the entire time and I was completely fine. I was completely fine. I didn't even have a want or a need to drink at all and I had a blast. It was so much freaking fun. I just recently went to a social event over this past weekend, had so much freaking fun and I didn't drink one drop of alcohol and I was DD and I was totally cool with it but I brought my own drinks and I had that agreement with myself that I'm choosing not to do this because it's not aligned with my goals. It's not aligned with the vision of the life that I want to create. And the second that I started taking control over the things that physically go into my body that I consume, and I realized that 
I have a choice. I have a choice of every single thing I put in my body. I have a choice of not just food and alcohol, not just food and drink, but I have a choice of the things I listen to, the environments I put myself in, the people I surround myself with, the things I read, the things I consume. Literally, I have a choice for all of that. I started choosing to surround myself and consume things that were only aligned with the vision of the life that I wanted and my life started to change. That is it. I made the choice to only participate, only consume, only do things that were aligned with what I wanted in my life, the vision that I have for my life and things started to change. Because a lot of the times we have these goals, right? We have this vision of what we want in our life but our actions aren't aligned with our goals. And then we get pissed when we don't get these goals. If your actions aren't aligned with the goals that you're trying to achieve, you will never achieve those goals. You are wasting your time. You are literally paddling up fucking stream and getting mad that you're getting nowhere. Guys, take the time to do a self audit on what you actually wanna create in your life. Be fucking brutally honest with yourself and seriously sit down and ask yourself, are the environments, the things I'm eating, the things I'm drinking, the things I'm consuming as far as it goes for listening to watching, are these things actually aligned with what I wanna achieve with my life? The people I'm surrounding myself with, are these people lifting me up? Are they bringing me down and in reality, you know, that's, that's what it comes down to for me. I will stop at nothing to create the exact life by design that I want, and I've only fucking scratched the surface. I'm not even near close to what I'm gonna achieve in my life. I'm only 26 years old, and I'm gonna have a fucking life that most people can only dream of because I'm doing the work now, and I'm choosing to do the work now. And this shit's hard, and sometimes it's fucking lonely, but the people who truly love you, they'll stick around. They'll stick around no matter what you choose. And I'm telling you right now, when you start to put yourself first and take care of your health, you're able to show up for the people in your life so much more powerfully than when you were a shit bag, being fucking hammered all the time, taking shots all the time, waking up half drunk, going to train your clients. Like that's just not a life of fulfillment that I want. And that's all humans want in their lives is to feel loved, feel seen and feel fulfilled. And so if you're not doing that and you're feeling kind of stuck like I was, take some time to do a serious audit on yourself. But I'm gonna wrap it up because I'm gonna go eat dinner. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and then if you guys need anything ever, just shoot me a DM on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe, click on that little bell so you never miss a tip from me again. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.